What's up, guys? Today we are talking about the Mount Rushmore of flyweight fighters all time. That's basically narrowing it down to four names that we're going to put on the Mount Rushmore of 125 pound fighters. Um, to me, the list is kind of split. It's half guaranteed and then the other half I think is pretty controversial. So I have my four names. Um, I'm curious to see what you guys think as well. So just drop it down in the comments if you guys disagree or if you agree. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe. I'm going to be trying to do this more often. Um, but we'll just get right into it with the four fighters. And the first one is is very painfully obvious. And this is actually kind of sad because a while back I remember tweeting out like, oh, you know, who is your flyweight goat? And I actually forgot to put this guy on there. And of course, it's Demetrius Johnson. It's Mighty Mouse. It's one of the greatest UFC fighters. Not just one of the greatest 125ers, but one of the greatest fighters to ever do it. Top five for sure. Um, and I kind of just forgot his name and that just kind of speaks to the fact that one, he hasn't really been in the UFC in a long time and maybe it's also a product of recency bias and we just kind of forget his whole title run, but his title run was insane. It was 11 consecutive title defenses, uh, 12 total title fight wins, and he just ranks among the absolute best. I think really the only other ones to do it are John Jones uh, GSP had a long run. Anderson Silva had a long run, but Mighty Mouse is right in that mix. So this is a very obvious start to the list. I don't think anybody is going to disagree there. Um, it's actually crazy that DJ is still fighting today and he's still fighting at a very high level. So Mighty Mouse is the very obvious one. Um, this dude, I mean, the only knock that you can really say is that the level of competition wasn't really there. Uh, he fought Triple C back in the day, finished him, John Dodson a couple times, Joseph Benavides a couple times, and then it really wasn't until, you know, Triple C avenged his loss until he kind of got traded, and we didn't really see much of Demetrius Johnson after that, but um, the, the title run before that was just unprecedented and probably will never be done again, maybe across the UFC, certainly at the 125 weight class, so He's the obvious number one. Um, number two, and maybe it is a little bit controversial, but I, I think Henry Cejudo, Triple C, deserves to be in that mix. I know he kind of had a shorter 125 run than a lot of the other guys that I'm going to mention, but I just don't see how you can not put him on there because he was the guy. It wasn't pretty. It was close, but he was the guy to dethrone the GOAT, Demetrius Johnson, so you have to at least give him credit for that. That is a massive all-time, one of the best wins you could ever have on your resume. And then he did go on to defend the belt against TJ Dillashaw as well, getting a round one knockout. So he doesn't really have the longevity. He doesn't really have necessarily the best resume with the best names. But I feel like just the fact that he beat DJ automatically puts him on here. And maybe I'm wrong. You guys can let me know. But the first... The first two are going to be Demetrius Johnson, and the second one's going to be Henry Cejudo. Um, and this is kind of where it gets gets a little bit more dicey. You start thinking about these guys who have been in the mix now for a couple years. Um, the third name that I'm going to throw on there is Divison Figueredo. And I know it's a little bit controversial for, for a few different reasons. So first off, um, he kind of always struggled to make 125. You could say that he's a weight bully. And then he did lose the quadrilogy to Brandon Moreno. But I'm going to kind of poke holes in that a little bit. The first fight ruled as a draw. But I believe there was a point taken away. Divison Figueredo should have won that fight. That was, you know, prime Figgy beating a very game Brandon Moreno. But that should be a W for Figueredo. The second fight, if I remember correctly, there was some sort of last minute illness that I think was really messing with the weight cut. And yeah, Moreno goes in there, gets the round three submission, dominates the fight. I don't think that was prime Figgy. And I really do believe in that third fight when Figgy won the unanimous decision over the five rounds. He was, you know, training with fight ready at that point. Um, that seemed to me like that was a prime version of Figueredo and a prime version of Moreno. And we saw Figueredo come out on top. I just like we've never seen a guy at 125 be that physically imposing. And I don't know that we ever will. And that is partially because he was a way bully down at 125. But I really firmly believe that when you take the prime version of Figueredo who was able to make 125, that's a level of athleticism and power 
and he also had the submission and grappling skills to go along with it. That's something that just might never be matched again. So for me, in a weird way, I'm putting Figgy on the list. I know you guys might think differently, but again, it is my Mount Rushmore, and he's uh, number three on the list. And it gets a little dicey on number four because you could go with a couple of different names, but for number four, I am going to go with Alex Pantoja, who is the current champion and it's, it's hard to say. So that means Brandon Moreno is going to get the ax. And it doesn't really necessarily make sense because Moreno did win the quadrilogy, quadrilogy against uh, Figueredo. So to leave him off the list kind of feels weird. But when you look at the, the head-to-head matchups that Pantoja had with Moreno, it really felt like those were two guys in their primes. And Pantoja came out on top both times. And now we're adding in the fact that Pantoja is now going for, what, his third title defense? Um, he beat Brandon Roy Val. That was a close fight, but we just saw how good the wrestling and grappling was. And then against Steve Ursig, another close fight, but the wrestling and the grappling reigns supreme again. He's probably the best wrestler and grappler we've seen since Triple C and since Mighty Mouse. So he's just able to go in there and just dominate guys. And sometimes it seems like the cardio isn't going to hold up, but the dude has a legit heart of a lion. So he is able to go that full five minutes and just push an insane pace. So... I don't know. It's, it's close. You could easily throw in Brandon Moreno over Figueredo, or you could throw him in over Pantoja. But for me personally, I'm going to throw Pantoja in there on my fourth pick. So we have Mighty Mouse, we have Triple C, we have Figueredo, and we have Pantoja. That's my Mount Rushmore of flyweight fighters. Curious to see what you guys think. Let me know down below in the comments. If you didn't already, hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.